Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, here recently in our Discord server, a request came in to install a to-do app called Vicuña. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Vicuña in Docker. But first, here's a message from today's video sponsor. YourCDKey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page. And right here, you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm going to come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we want to do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there, you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So here we are on my desktop and here we can see that I've already got Vicuña up and running and I just want to give a quick overview on kind of how it works, what it is, that sort of thing. So if we take a look here, we can see that it's a very basic layout, which I really do appreciate. Uh, sometimes the simpler, the better, especially when it comes to to-do lists. So here we are on the home page, and here we can see that it's, it's super easy to just add a new task, but uh, it goes much deeper than that. So uh, if we come over here a little bit on the left, overview is kind of the home page. Uh, below that we've got upcoming and we can see that I've got a couple of video projects in here uh, that have to do or that have uh, due dates on them. Uh, and of course, those are coming up in four days and six days respectively. So that way I can kind of keep a track of what's coming up next that needs to get uh, addressed first. So uh, here's just a quick uh, list of what's coming up soon. Uh, and over below upcoming, we've got namespaces and lists. Uh, so let's say, uh, let's say for instance, I've got YouTube here. Uh, I may also add a list under the YouTube namespace. Like the first one here says YouTube video projects. I also may have uh, another uh, list in that namespace for uh, video sponsors or, you know, things like that where I can kind of have a category and then, a, and then multiple subcategories under that category. So think of namespaces as categories and lists as subcategories. And then you can put tasks under each of those lists. So you really can be pretty granular about each of those things. Uh, below that, we've got labels. So if you wanted to have kind of a, another way to categorize things, you could absolutely do labels. Uh, teams, of course, you had uh, several people that you wanted to be able to include in your tasks. You could uh, create a team here. Uh, here we've got uh, three different namespaces. We've got DB Tech, YouTube, and Home. And of course, uh, under uh, YouTube, I've got a, a couple of additional uh, lists for projects and things like that. So that's kind of the gist of how uh, the, the site architecture or the site navigation works and kind of the breakdown on how those different elements uh, kind of work with each other. So if we come into, uh, you know, like video projects, for instance, uh, I'm just going to create a demo uh, project here just so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I'll click add. And just that easy, now we've got a demo project, but we can then go in, we can click that, and here we've got lots of options for uh, being able to add uh, video descriptions, for instance. So let's do, uh, oops, let's go ahead and click in there um, and say this is a video description. And then we can click save, and now we have a, a description in there. Uh, we can add comments. So let's say you had multiple people on a team, uh, you could uh, communicate back and forth through that, uh, through this comment section. Or if you just wanted to leave yourself additional notes, uh, just if you're the only person using this, comments are a great way to do that as well. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of covers that. If we go over to the right side, that's where things, um, holy cow, there's a jet flying over and I've got the door open. So holy cow, that's loud. I mean, don't even know if you can hear it. Okay, so if we come over here to the right hand side of the screen, we can see that um, we can looks like maybe mark that as done. I'm going to mark that as undone because it's not done. But that's how you can complete a task. Um, under that, we've got subscribe. So uh, you could subscribe to something and get all of the notifications for it. Uh, we can assign this task to a user. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that uh, and assign myself there. Again, we can add labels, we can set priorities, uh, we can set due dates. So I can go ahead and click here. And let's say I want that due on the eighth at uh, noon. Uh, this is in uh, 24 hour military time. Uh, so pretty easy to navigate there. 
Uh, we'll say that for 11 o'clock on uh, Wednesday the 8th. Um, and then we can set a start date uh, when we want it to start. So I'm gonna start it on the 6th and click that. And then uh, end date, um, that is already set, so that's good. Uh, you can set up reminders. Uh, you can set what's the, what's the percentage done here. We'll say it's 50% done just for the sake of it. We can add attachments now. I will say there's a little caveat to adding attachments uh, that we may need to address, uh, but we'll come back to that. It's a permissions issue in the folders, super easy to fix, but just know that there, there could be something a little wonky uh, with adding attachments, but we can just go ahead and click on add attachment uh, and I'll just upload that and there it is. Uh, set a repeating interval, uh, not, oh, there, we already did that. Uh, task relations, so if you had uh, things that were dependent on each other, you could do that. You can move tasks, you can set task colors. Uh, so, you know, I could just say, I want, I want this task to be green. Uh, I can do that. And then I could set that as a favorite, like so. And now we've got all of this information set and ready to go for, uh, for this particular task. So if we come back uh, to upcoming, again, we've got, uh, we, we can kind of come back here and see this is doing five days. We can see the percentage is done. Uh, we can see who it's assigned to. Uh, we can see that I've favorited that. In fact, I can favorite these others over here as well. Uh, I can also show tasks without, uh, without due dates. Uh, so if you've got something you know is coming up, uh, you can view that there as well. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of what's, you know, today, this week, next month, things like that. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, that is coming up. Actually, yes, I do. There's a little bit of a glitch in here that I, I've noticed. Uh, if I come over to, let's just open one of these tasks, and, like right here, for instance. Um, nope, not here. Over, upcoming overview, where is it? Oh, here, here's what I was looking for. So uh, here we've got a few different options on how we can view these tasks. Um, and so like right now it is in list format. Uh, we can do it in a, a Gantt format uh, where we can kind of see some due dates. And if there were more things in here, uh, you would see bars for each of those. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to point out here is that we've got August and then October and then October. For some reason, uh, there's a little glitch right here. This should say September, but it doesn't. Um, if you know how to fix that, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. Would really like to know how to do that. So there's how Vicuña works in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sure I missed some things, but it's definitely uh, worth checking out. So let's go over and set this up uh, in Docker. But what I wanna say here is that we're not gonna do this in Docker Compose because of the way uh, the containers are built. We actually need to do all of this well, we use a Docker Compose file, but we're gonna do all of this in uh, in command lines. So just kind of something to, to, to keep in mind there. Uh, I will try to explain this as well as I can as we're going. So don't let uh, command line or SSH uh, keep you from checking this out as it is very, very easy to set up. But before we do that, uh, we may want this to be accessible from the internet. So let's actually go over and set up a subdomain in Cloudflare, and then uh, we can start getting things set up so that we can have a subdomain pointed to our Vicuña application. Here I am on uh, Cloudflare. I'm gonna use a, a, a dot .click domain name. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, Porkbun has actually given me a coupon to share with you guys that will allow you to get up to three dot .click domains uh, until the end of the year uh, for just 99 cents a piece. So check out the uh, description down below for more information on how to get your own dot .click domain for 99 cents. Uh, here we are again, we're, we're on Cloudflare. I love using Cloudflare for my DNS and security and all that kind of stuff. Amazing, amazing products. So that's why I, why I like to use Cloudflare here. I've already got uh, an A record set up for dbtech.click. That's the root domain that we're gonna use here. So what I wanna do is actually set up a C name uh, for that so that if, uh, for whatever reason, my IP address ever changes uh, I and, and the A record here changes, the C name will automatically update without having to change individual A records as we go. So that's why I use C names there. Uh, as far as that's concerned, uh, what I wanna do here is actually type in um, um, uh, to do, like so, and here we can see that it'll be to do.dbtech.click right there. And then for the target, I'm just gonna set that to at. Um, and that just uh, points to the root domain. And for right now, I just wanna set this to DNS only. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. And now we've got our, our DNS kind of doing its thing in the background uh, for the domain name while we're setting everything else up. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, just SSH into uh, my Synology server. So I'm gonna do uh, my username at 
uh, Jarvis, like so. And then I've got this on a different port. Uh, so we'll do this, oops, like so. Now, the reason I put that dash P6943 uh, is that's the port I switched my SSH uh, port to. So just for a little additional security there. So I'll go ahead and put in my password. Okay, so now we're SSH'd into the server. So what I wanna do is just an LS to kind of see where we are here. Let's do slash home, oops. All right, so what we'll do is we're just gonna do a make directory like so. And then we'll call this uh, Vicuña. And then and then we'll do and CD into Vicuña. And then there's nothing in there. So that's good. Now we can move on to creating a couple of files. Uh, the first file that we're going to create, and this is why we can't do this in Portainer, we're going to create an nginx.conf file. So uh, we'll do nano uh, engin oops, nginx.conf like so. And then we've got this empty file here. Okay, so here is the nginx.conf uh, file that we're going to use. Uh, there's nothing in here you need to change uh, unless you want to uh, change the client max body size. You can change that if you'd like. 20 max is probably fine. Uh, so you, at this point, you can just do control X uh, and then say yes, um, and then enter, and that will save and exit that file. At that point, we're basically done with everything we need to do with the nginx.conf file. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually create our Docker Compose file for this project. So we'll say nano docker compose.yml and hit enter. And then we'll paste this in here. And then I'm gonna drag this up so we can see uh, more of the screen. So this is actually going to create one, two, three, four containers for us uh, to, to handle everything. The first one that it's going to create is a database. Uh, we can see that right here uh, where it says DB. Below that, we're gonna use the uh, Maria database. Uh, we've got all of our, envir our environmental variables there. We've also set the uh, the character set for uh, uh, for the database. Uh, below that, we've got some volumes. Uh, we're just going to keep that in this directory. That's perfectly fine uh, for what I'm doing here. If you wanted to, you could map that somewhere else. Uh, but because I've got so much space on the Synology device, I'm just going to leave it here. Below that, we've got an API um, uh, container as well. Uh, and this is going to... Um, connect to the database. Here we can see uh, we've got our database host, our, our password, all of the connection information. Uh, of course, I do encourage you to change uh, your, your passwords and things like that. But again, for the sake of secure, or for the, for the sake of the tutorial here, I'm not going to do that. Uh, below that, we've got our uh, service front end URL, and that is that to do uh, dbtech.click. Make sure that that is what I've got there. Um, so that's what I've got going on there. Uh, we're going to enable task attachments. That's one. If you wanted to disable that, you could set that to zero. Enable registration. Again, uh, leave this at one if you want to enable registration. Zero if you don't. Uh, enable e email reminders. Again, same thing. Mailer. Uh, is, I, I would assume you would want to get email about your tasks, that sort of thing. Uh, if not, you can set that to zero um, and then delete all of the mailer stuff down here below that. Uh, but basically... Uh, we've got our uh, mailer enabled, uh, mailer force uh, SSL. Uh, that may be different depending on what you're using. I'm going to be using a Gmail account that I've got set up just for notifications. Uh, so then you put in your, your mailer port for SMTP and then your username and password. Again, that'll all be uh, Gmail stuff for my setup here. Um, and then we've got uh, volumes where we're going to uh, store our files for the API. Again, you can map this basically wherever. I'm just going to leave it in this directory. And then restart and let's stop. That's true for, for everything here. Uh, we've got a front end container. We don't need to change anything there. We've also got a proxy container for this. Uh, now that's that's how we're actually going to access the front end. So uh, in if we if remember back to the nginx.conf file that we used before, uh, that we set up before, it was on port 80. So that's what we're going to use here. However, we can change this port 8022 to whatever we'd like it to be. Uh, just make sure that it's not being used by anything else on your Docker system. Uh, below that, we're going to map uh, wherever we store that nginx.conf file uh, that we just created. Again, that's going to be in this directory. So this is fine. And this will depend on the API in the front end. And then uh, restart and let's stop. Again, pretty standard stuff as far as that's concerned. So once we're happy with that, we can do uh, control uh, X and then say yes, and then hit enter. And then at this point, we're ready to uh, deploy the container.
So just to keep things clean, let's just go ahead uh, and do that, clear the screen, and then we'll go ahead and deploy. So what we're gonna do here is uh, docker compose up dash D for detached. If you don't run it detached, it'll just run everything in the uh, command line here and, and, and that just won't work. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and hit uh, enter. So it's gonna go ahead and uh, pull everything that it needs, uh, extract, set up, and uh, once that's done, we'll come back and uh, take a look at what we need to do next. Okay, so we ran into a bit of an error here. And what that means is if I do uh, an LS, oops, like so, it, what it's saying is, hey, I can't find uh, this DB folder that you asked me to put things in. So let's go in here uh, and take a look. So we need to create, it looks like a DB folder as well as a files folder. Now, this is going to be something that's most likely just a Synology issue. So uh, if you run into an issue like this, uh, just know that it's a Synology thing. So uh, we're gonna create a, a DB folder and a files folder. So we're gonna do mkdir db, um, oops, and uh, mkdir files, uh, and then we should be able to, oops. Okay, so now that should be good to go. So what we wanna do next, let's go to Jarvis 9000. And let's go ahead and take a look at our containers here. And it looks like we've got our uh, Vicuña proxy API DB and front end. Now, uh, one of the issues that you may run into here, connection refused. Uh, that's because it doesn't know that the database container isn't up yet. Uh, so what we can do here is just come into here uh, and let this do its thing. Once it is uh, set up and ready to go, we can actually go ahead and restart the other Vicuña containers uh, and then they should be able to connect. So we'll give this a minute and then we'll come back and take a look. A few moments later. Okay, so let's actually come back out of here. And what we're gonna do is this. And we're just gonna restart the other three containers. Okay, so it looks like things are up and running. So let's go ahead. And the next thing we wanna do here is come over to our Nginx proxy manager. We're going to add a proxy host. And this was to do.dbtech.click. Uh, the scheme will just be HTTP and this will be 192.168.1.25. And I believe that was on port 8022. And then we're gonna go ahead and block common exploits. We'll enable uh, WebSocket support. Uh, we'll go over here to SSL. We're going to request a new SSL, just like so, and then click save. Okay, so right here is uh, the URL, or the, the, yeah, the URL that we just set up. What I wanna do here is actually come back over here and re-click both of those, like so. And then we can click over to here. We've got todo.dbtech.click slash log in. So what we're gonna do is actually register a new account. There are no default uh, accounts in here. So you will wanna just create your own. So we're gonna do this. And there we are, we're logged in. Uh, and now we've got a brand new setup to use here. Um, and then what's actually kind of cool about this is that, do, 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 let's bring this up. When I, uh, you can see that this just came through zero minutes ago. Uh, so right here, I just wanna go ahead and click on confirm your email address. So now my address is confirmed and we know that uh, email is working. So uh, that's how easy it is to set up Vicuña for your own personal to-do list. And what's nice about this again, is that uh, because we've got it on our own uh, custom domain, we can access from any, this from anywhere that has a, a, an internet connection, including on your phone when you're on the go, those sorts of things. So you can manage things on the go uh, pretty easily using Vicuña. So there you go, guys. There's a quick and easy setup for uh, this to-do list. Uh, hopefully you'll find it useful. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on this. Also, if you've got other ideas for, for additional uh, applications that you'd like to see run in, in, uh, in Docker, let me know. I'd love to hear about that as well. Also, I wanna give a big shout out to my channel members, my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Um, but I think with all of that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.